Welcome to The Advocate, where we discuss topical issues in a no-holds-bad manner. In other words, we call a spade by its name. According to Julia Hart, there's a lot of clarity in hindsight. So today, I'm taking you on the journey I have titled, Things I Wish I Knew Before Now. Felix, who makes his debut today, is lecturing us on youth and leadership. Juliet, who also makes her debut today, is telling us about how much our environment influences our lives. And Coyote wraps the show up by asking if we even know that as Nigerians we have rights. So sit back and after this break, we'll be here to dissect it all. Stay with us. Things I wish I knew before now. So here I am taking stock. And checking out things, and I decided to do a listing of all I've learned over the years. So, fasten your seatbelts and enjoy the ride with me. Here goes. One, what my 18-year-old self should have known. Hmm, it's so important to have a life plan. And no, I wasn't too young, and neither are you. Two, after law school, and maybe before, it would have been a good idea to have a career plan. A little bit of career planning and strategy wouldn't have been so bad, right? But hey, maybe it wasn't so bad after all. Because how would I have gone from a law degree to a master's degree in international law and diplomacy to working in international media and then veering into branding and education? Anyway, you get my drift though. A little strategy would have helped my wanderlust have a path. So, get your digs on and put a strategy on that career. Ah, the one that I learned and enjoyed and still do is meeting strangers and becoming friends. And I have a story about that even today. It's such a pleasure to walk up to strangers and leave feeling like best friends. A small tip on how to do that. Just find a way to make it about the other person. Remember, everyone likes someone who makes them feel sane. Should I share here my first full on public experience with a fuck and knife? Oh my goodness, my law school dinner. All I thought of was, how is this chicken going to be demolished with a fuck and knife? Like, how do I not pick up the chicken with my fingers? Well, let's just say I'm glad for my mother's lessons and an observant eye that quickly scanned the room. So my dear, dear, dear. Grab some dining etiquette tips so that you don't bump on your next business lunch. See me now. It's hard to believe I was terribly shy at some point, but I was painfully so. But a few lessons on how to build my confidence straightened me out. I do hope that you are also doing some stock taking because life in Nigeria is hard. But it can definitely be a bit different when you look at your life and all you are, where and can become. So like me. Maybe you want to ask yourself, who am I? What are my strengths, my weaknesses? What opportunities is life offering me based on where I'm coming from and what I am now? There is a proverb that says, if you don't know where you're coming from, you can't know where you're going. So yes, while the threat to life right now may be Nigeria itself, what are those things you have learned over the years? What do you wish your 18-year-old self had known, and what would you want your 70-year-old self to say about the life you lived? Well, price of rice, beans and gari has increased, but we are here, and we all need life hacks to survive. This is my own to you today. My advocacy is find how to mentally survive in Nigeria and become the person that you want to be. So... <laughs> <laughs> I guess Juliet, that was quite a moving word for you. So, uh, what are your thoughts, Juliet? I think she can she can identify with it. Probably tell us your first experience with fuck and knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But you see, naturally, ah, this is she, yeah. She's still. What, what, this is what I see. What you just discussed or just um, uh, presented here is a subject that affects a lot of people. 
of course, they're talking about the lighter side, fuck a knife, beard, but mm -hmm. a lot of people go through school not knowing what they want. Mm -hmm. I have a niece who today is into catering and doing very well, baking cakes and all that. And we were talking one day and I said, you know, you just wasted your parents' school fees. He said, like, boy, I know. I have just gone to baking school from secondary school and I started making money a long time ago. And the truth is, it was bad in the 80s and the 90s mm -hmm. when someone was finishing school. But now it's worse because back then you still had people you could look up to. Maybe, you know, we're trumpeting maybe law or, or engineering or something. You had people you could look up to in the family. You had mentors that were mentoring you directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. People whose uh, life you were shaping yours after. Mm -hmm. But right now, we don't have quote-unquote father figures anymore. Mm -hmm. So the youth are a lot more lost right now than we were during our own time. Because though you were lost, you still have people you could see around you that you could want to emulate. But now, I tell people that a lot of the English, a word like grammarian, a word like bogus, though we use it wrongly for a long time. I know, right? We learned, we picked all that from some big boys in the area. Yes. We picked some of these words from music. We picked it from movies. But now, but, I don't I, know where I, they're I going. Know. I don't know if, I know, I know that so this is the general viewpoint that people hold mm. about how things are worse. But then at the same time, I sort of feel like Maybe back then, when we were growing older, mm -hmm. our parents also felt that things, the older ones felt this as well. I'm sure that somehow, because I was having a discussion, interestingly today, <laughs> about a few things, but I feel like there's still a ray of hope. And I feel that rather than us continuously talk about how things are worse or they're getting bad or like young people don't know what to be, maybe we should start shining the light on how they will actually find their own pathway. Mm. Change is the only constant thing in life. And I think Juliet right. may have some views on this as well. I actually. believe so. <laughs> so Juliet, what are your I thoughts? Have, I mean, this was very profound. I was actually lost in the entire text. I was just like, wow. The mm. context of the lesson was, was very profound and it was very clear. Mm. Where you're coming from actually helps where you're going to. It was so, so, so out. And I reson it resonated with me. Mm. But one thing I also know that people should look at is determine where they are going to. Yes. You know, where are you going to? Where do you want to be? Mm. We just go through life without planning, mm -hmm. without like an idea on the final destination. I think the educational system helped us to think like that. I think this is my opinion. Because sure. for some reason, you just don't do a lot of things. You get into primary one. You finish school, the school pushes you here and there, you do lessons, you get into the university. Everything just seems to be automatic. That's true. Then you graduate. And then it becomes what next? And you are like, the government <laughs> is not doing anything, the place is not safe, because there's you no know? more enabler, yeah. Yeah. like the school system helps. So you've been spoiled for like 12, 15 so years on automatic growth, and mm -hmm. there is no plan. Mm. Very true. But what I tell people is, you have to define your destination. Sure. What do you want? I know the country has issues, we all agree, but in this rut, yes. people are still successful. Mm -hmm. Very true. What are they doing differently? And you know, that is one motivation, Coyote, yeah. I mean, sorry, um, Felix, yes, yeah. that's one thing that pushes me. What, I mean, what are your what, own thoughts? My thoughts, I, I agree with all you, all you said, but I will slightly differ. When oh, you really? said the okay. system is systemic, okay. you, you go through like a, a robot and then you come out, uh, I finished primary to secondary school. I think the Socratic Dixon says, so, and on examining life is not worth living. When you mm. grow into adulthood, think about your life in retrospect, mm. just like what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. Just like how you had to learn how to use the fork and knife, and you are <laughs> environmentally centric, environment, um, environmentally centric. That is, you are, you, are, you are aware of your environment, and mm -hmm. then you see, like, feedback mechanism in engineering. You take back your errors, take mm. it internally, internalize True. your mistake, True. learn from your mistake, move on, mm -hmm. and write your script. The future is a script. Yeah. Write it out and play it out. Yeah, but you see, what you're saying now, I agree with both of you, strangely. <laughs> yes. and let me start with you. Now, I'm going to use a very good, simple example, something that happened recently. My wife took a course online, and after I did the course, submitted the assignment, and there was a feedback that, okay, she still work on the assignment because it was an assignment-based uh, um, course, certification, that she worked on the assignment. And interestingly, they gave bullet points of what she was to write. And in mm. my mind, I'm like, ah. Why people are giving the answer already? What's all this? <laughs> but you know what I noticed? Mm -hmm. By the time 
she started answering those things. Mm. She discovered things she never knew because she now had to research, That's true. do new findings to mm -hmm. answer, though they've given her all the points, mm -hmm. but the amount of work that went into it made her stronger in that course compared to ours where you don't tell you where to study and we feel we are being so strong. You do all your Agbiru uh, Biso, you know, carry and drop and all that. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Agbiru Biso. You know. <laughs> In, in, in a long time, time you know. Cram la four. Cram la four. In my school, it was copy and paste. Copy and paste. You know. So th th that's one man. On the other hand, where is, I mean, where I tend to agree slightly, we use that. Listen, yeah, it's good to have a retrospective view at, at life. However, you can only be retrospective if you have understanding of where you are. Hmm. And that's where we're getting it wrong. A lot of people don't even listen. There are a lot of people now that don't understand until it's too late. Hmm. When they're in their early 30s or so, and they realize that, and what brings about the understanding, it's not an introspection. It's the reali reality that, hey, everybody around me is gone ahead of me. Yeah. I'm 30. Hmm. I haven't done this. Wow. Hmm. So then you start looking at life. That, okay. So there has to be an awakening element. Yep. And like you said, not th something has to shield you or guide you, not necessarily shield, all through life. Hmm. Like... I mean, the school, unfortunately, is the school that does that for us. But, <laughs> yeah. but if, you, if, you, if you're able to develop the brain to the extent that you have uh, um, M and E uh, mechanisms around that us, system. you that know, can. exactly, then we'll be able to grow better. And because, listen, we're not going anywhere. I was just telling someone recently that, listen, we seem to focus a lot more on entertainment. Okay, I think we're having that discussion yeah, earlier yeah. on. There are no more values. When I'm buying exercise books for my kids and I see a sports person or a celebrity, I'm like, no. Give me one with somebody wearing suits. You know, there's time for everything. Oh, well. <laughs> you know, I can say something quickly for you. Okay. I remember when my son was in primary school. Right. They told him to write their top 10 celebrities or popular people. Okay. Famous people. I think mm. it was famous people. Okay. So I was really interested to see who he considered famous, right? Mm. He was in primary school. He had Justin Bieber, Nicki oh Minaj. You can imagine. But there was Mandela and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Every other thing. And eight people. I didn't know some of the people, but I knew there was wow. Bieber, there was Michael Jackson, there was Nicki Minaj. And I was like, he said, no, but they're successful, mom. They're successful. <laughs> So, which is in line with what you just said. Anyway, people, this has been quite an interesting one, and I believe that the process of becoming success is just as important. So, up next is Felix after the break. Stay with us. Defining youth and leadership. Youth is best described as best understood as a period of transition from dependence of childhood to adulthood's independence. Youth is often referred to as a person between the ages of leaving compulsory education and finding the, their first job. The United Nations, for statistical purposes, defined these persons, those persons between the ages of 15 and 24, as youth without prejudice to other definition by member states. Leadership is all about strategy, development, impact, positive influence, and being environmentally aware. There are so many issues associated with being a youth, both from a global view, with respect to a country system, enhanced by its policy, and in the Nigerian situation. Generally, youths are associated with being energetic and innovative, due to their young minds and perhaps young bodies. According to population projections by the United Nations for 2020, about 43% of Nigerian population comprised of children between 0 to 14 years and 19% aged 15 to 24 years and about 62% are below 25 years. By contrast, less than 5% is aged 60 and above. Despite Nigerians increasing young population, there are some issues posing as barriers to youth development. Some of these issues are ageism and exclusion, in inadequately funded educational institutions or lack of proper education, youth del delinquency, insecurity, lack of adequate engagement, underemployment, and unemployment. Deliv developing youth opportunities and benefits includes inclusive policy, both in public and private sectors, geared towards national sustainability, intergenerational skill transfer and mentorship, building trust and collaboration beyond the stereotypes of ageism towards effective leadership. 
harnessing youthful effervescence and inspired innovation for fast socioeconomic growth of Nigeria, reorientation of the society towards service-driven system for our collective achievement as a nation. Can I say here that I'm a youth? From the sure, day. I'm, sure. I'm, you I'm, are. I'm, I'm Absolutely. Sure. My energy and my that place. I'm Absolutely. Please take my that. So don't Absolutely. Say, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> so five percent. Five percent. No. Absolutely. So I'm forever young. I'm a youth. Mm, forever. forever. So I was going to ask a question to you. Um, uh, any town. What do you think about this issue of ageism? You know, when we talk about ageism, mm -hmm. some people have this uh, in some quarters. You tell you this stereotype. Oh, at, at this certain age. You cannot achieve these same things. Like mm -hmm. during the Sorosuke mm -hmm. Sega, mm -hmm. you know, police will tell you, mm -hmm. oh, you're a mm -hmm. young boy, how are you driving this kind of car? You know, this question you're asking is a very interesting question for me. And not just because you're bringing up, and I, I probably, your example of Sorosuke, which is a young boy, but the first part of it that really hits me. And a few years ago, like oh, five years ago or so, I actually did a post on Facebook and I said to myself that, why do a lot of opportunities that come up, especially when you're looking at international global opportunities, stop at age 35? Yeah. I mean, I raised it. I said to myself, so it raised people coming up and sending questions to me. And I discovered a few platforms out of Nigeria that actually have programs that really launch people back into life. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's only for women. Where the, so ageism is a real problem. But then taking it to the younger people, I think one of the things that has happened in Nigeria, especially as a country, is that we sort of like mollycoddle our young people. We so pamper them. Everything is a matter of you finish school before you actually go and get a job. Exactly. So the expectation for income or for so independence is, ex is at a certain age. Delayed, eh? While ideally, you are, school is not supposed to be just a means to an end. It's a learning process. And you should be able to start to do some level of independence. So the, you, you triggered me by asking about <laughs> that ageism question. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of things, I mean, I push for a lot of those things around that. But then, on both sides of the divide, no one is too young to be successful. And no one, and no one is, is too old. Too old to start a dream afresh, no matter what mm. way it is that your yeah. career or your mates have been. I like See. that. I like that. Actually, when they, when, during the 20, 2019 election, the period I had the 2019 election, when they came to Not Too Young to Rule campaign, I had this thought in me. Yes, I like the fact that they want young people to be involved in policies, but I also feel that I don't like being around young people that think old people have expired and they should go. No. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. everybody should be allowed to do whatever they need to yeah. do in as much as they have the right skills mm -hmm. and knowledge to contribute to societal development. What do you think about the issue of systematic inclusion and policy, especially for gender issues relating to Nigeria? Because we're talking about youth. Youth is not gender focused. A youth can be either a woman or a man. Mm -hmm. So most times people have this idea of saying, oh, young boys should do this, or young men should do What do you think about developing young ladies too? and uh, con having young men contribute meaningfully to leadership and national development, Juliet? Thank you for that question. There's a lot of questions, really. <laughs> and um, if you come to the gender side, I think in terms of development, everybody should have an opportunity, irrespective sure. of your gender, your race, your nationality, or anything. If you are interested in something, you should be given the opportunity to yeah, express sure. yourself and be developed, like you have said. Mm. So I think, I don't believe we should do a gradual what's it called, integration of young people into leadership. Leadership is influence. Leadership is a lot of things. Anybody can be a leader. Once you have the interest, you have the skill, and every skill is learnable. Sure. So and I don't think there's a particular age where you should cut off people and say, oh, you can't be this, you can't be that. Anybody can be anything. If the person has the interest, all the mm. country needs is that structure to make it effective. Mm. So I can be 20 and be a leader. I can be 80 and be an if ineffective leader. It's not mm. age-based. Yeah. So open the system, let there be a criteria to bring people in, irrespective of their age, and let there also be a selection process to kick people Very out true. That's it. who are in but, but, but you see, at, at the end of the day, right, if you, yeah. look at, if you look at this ageism on its own, since we, I mean, we're all talking about that, let me not be the only one that is looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> ageism on its own, for me, it's both um, a reality and a problem. Mm. Why do I say that? Yes, we, we use age to kick a lot of people out of uh, what they deserve. But at the same time, age is a reality in the sense that when we look at the States and maybe the West, from, and that's why I tell people that from a teenager, you are taught to go work in a supermarket, to raise funds for yourself, yeah, go and do this, go and do that. Mm -hmm. So from a tender age, maybe 15, 16, you're mm -hmm. working so you can make money mm -hmm. to buy your phone. 
But from our own tender age, you are giving all these things. So if somebody tells you in Nigeria that at the age of 20, how did you get this? He hasn't done anything wrong, mm. technically, in our context oh. as Nigerians. Because at age of 20, let's ask, tell ourselves the truth. How many youth are working? At that age, and that, that's earning a lot, to live a certain a lot lifestyle. exactly to live a certain lifestyle. So within, but however, in the states, for example, you're talking of Mark Zuckerberg's and their likes. When did they start their company? They've been working for so long. How many yeah, people at the age of 22 in Nigeria have bank accounts? Some people open bank accounts when they're going to the university, of which in some other climes, I mean the West and stuff, you're working, you're saving, you're doing this. Even when we are giving money as kids, our parents don't give it to us; they at spend all, it. They collect the yeah, money. They they collect the money. <laughs> so if at that age you are told thought, dear, that this, we, for our context, I agree with your thoughts, but mm. hang on a second. There is hold your thoughts. And then let's link it to this idea of intergenerational skill transfer and mentorship. You were saying something about too much focus earlier on entertainment and mm -hmm. neglecting other aspects. We have youths that are or talented in different areas. Every Nigerian youth must not be involved in entertainment. Mm -hmm. Some are, are talented in technology, mm -hmm. in the art and other aspects. So what do you think the government or the society, both from the private sector mm -hmm. or the public sector, can do mm -hmm. to enhance this skill? Because mm -hmm. I remember some time ago, I went to um, a telecommunication industry then, why our uh, company, I will not disclose the name, while I was doing my IT so many years ago, or not so long ago. And then they, they told me then <laughs> You don't want to fall out of the youth bracket, I <laughs> see. <laughs> it's uh, all right. They said they are not going to accept any young Nigerian undergraduates to work in their firm on internship because they have high hybrid system. So I kept wondering, if they don't transfer this skill to us, and it's a foreign company, by mm. the way, how... Do we have people that can stand up? You know, listen, the, the truth is, the How truth many? is, a lot of times when we talk youth, we talk youth like they're handicapped, like they're underprivileged. Youth are not underprivileged. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, was, I believe in this, that when we say nothing is working in Nigeria, almost every aspect of Nigeria that is working today, that is working, mm -hmm. you have a lot of youth influence in it. True. If, uh, if we're winning awards globally in the music or in the entertainment, it's youth. run by the youth. Sports. Yeah, sure. It's sports, right. it's the youth. So, and that's why I tell people that when it comes to politics and all these things, we did not wait for it to be handed over to us. The youth, mm. well, I'm a bit above the youth age, but, <laughs> really? you know, yeah, I'm a bit above it. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we, we did not wait. People fought for it and kept spending their own time and money. Mm. But that we don't practice when it comes to politics. Because and the, the if is paying no exactly no, but you see, and politics itself, we have a wrong idea, understanding of politics. We look at politics at the presidency. No, mm. politics is your area. It's local, yeah. If you get your area right, people can even tell you that if you don't go for uh, chairmanship, who we'll support you? How many people have earned that kind of influence mm. in their area to earn the trust of people to the extent that you are told go? And listen, all these people we talk about, they are sure Jews and go. They all started as Jews in their thirties. Sorry, they I fought their way the through. That he asked you about intergenerational mm. transfer of skills and mentorship. I have a because this question came up. I saw on somebody's status and she spoke about how you know you're already a young person. You go for a job and they ask you for experience. And then he said he went to for an internship and he said they want they didn't want young unemployed young undergraduates. But I have I have a question. I said one I understand that issue and we used to all kid about it. The reality of life is that knowledge is accessible to almost everyone as well, I especially today if you're a young person if you've been if you've been a young person or in that age bracket for the last five to ten years mm -hmm. you cannot actually hide under the guise of they did not give you, you know what senator that is a different topic on its own we need to move on before we run oh, okay. i'm so sorry okay. <laughs> is what he said about people but I mean sectors mm -hmm. behaving like they are handicapped hmm. it hits wow you know that hits it's it. I know the, the economy does not enable, it doesn't, it doesn't make it easy, mm. but nobody is disabled. Mm. Exactly. You can do something. something. Very sure. Very true. You can make a difference. I know you Very can't true. be the president, like you said, <laughs> you can start from your streets mm. and make a difference Very in your true. school, yeah. in your place of work. Just try and don't behave like you are disabled That's or you are handicapped. That's well, true. thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution. We would actually try our best. We, we encourage youth out there to try their best, do something, don't rest. And then, speaking of which, after the break, we're going to call on Juliet to continue. The power of your environment. 
Recently, I saw a post online and it reads, if you hang around five billionaires, you will become the sixth. I thought it was profound, so I shared it with my son. As an African mother, I tweaked it a bit. So when I shared the screenshot with him, I now wrote in text below. Son, if you hang around five losers, what do you think would happen? And he responded, I will become one of them. My son was 16 at the time, and he was always getting into trouble in school with his friends. Well, I'm not going to go into my son. His father is a scooch, not me. <laughs> but let's come back to the power of association. Power of association is very powerful. It affects your thinking, your habits, the way you speak, and what you do. To achieve your goals and your dreams, it is important for you to surround yourself with successful people. Now that we are on the same page, let's take this a notch higher. Beyond your association, your entire environment influences what you do, what you become, and what you have. I know people who want to quit smoking, but they spend their time in the same joints. They hang around the same set of smoking friends, and they wonder why they can't quit smoking. It is impossible to quit smoking if you don't change some things around you. So there are basically three ways people attempt change. The most popular one is when you change yourself, but you retain your environment. If you use this strategy, growth will be slow and very difficult. It will be like an uphill task. Another strategy people use is that they change their environment but they remain the same. In this instance, growth is also slow, but not as difficult. The ultimate strategy to effect change and growth is to change your environment and to change yourself. Using this strategy, growth will be faster and more successful. I will leave you with some examples of environment because sometimes it looks vague. And I also want you to know some questions you ask yourself to determine the optimality and effectiveness of your environment. Let's look at music. What songs lifts you up? People that are smart know what songs to play at different times. Imagine, for example, you are listening to Celine Dion. My heart will go on and on, <laughs> and you are in the gym. <laughs> That's a heart attack. You will get no you will get nothing done. It's a very depressing song choice for the gym. So people that are smart know their song choices. Let's look at the home, another environment. What family members enable your progress? I'm not going to go there. Family is very sensitive. Another environment is friends. What people encourage you and help you become a better person? Since I changed my network, I have some of them here. My growth has been exponential, both my personal life and my coaching practice. It is very important that you choose the people you spend time with wisely. Let's go to another type of environment, books. What books add value to you? Check out people who read books on manipulation, like the 48 Laws of Power. Please don't read it. <laughs> People like these are excellent manipulators. If you want to excel in anything, read books that enable you in that area. Another environment, there are so many examples, but I'll try and exhaust the few that come to my mind. Let's look at recreation. What activities revive you? For some, it's swimming. For some, it's the movies, the spa. For me, it's sleep. Once I sleep, I'm revived. There is no wrong answer. You just need to know what works for you, what activities ultimately revives you. 
Let's look at another powerful environment, your experiences. What experiences revitalize you? I have clients who have trust issues. They can't date as a result because of some negative experiences they had in the past. The truth is, if you reflect in, in your life, you reflect honestly, you will recall both great and not so great experiences. People that grow focus on the great and good experiences that ultimately rejuvenates them. My dear friends, the simple truth is that growth in any area of your life is enabled or hampered by your environment. So you must guide your environment seriously. Look how you do. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when you started talking, the first thing that came to mind is part of how you ended it. Um, you become what you profess, kind of. And it reminded me of what my pastor said many years ago. He said, listen, if, you, if you're a man that has always been to brothels, all your life or for a very long time in your life, then you become born again. You don't go, you don't choose the brothel as your first place of evangelism. A few months. <laughs> that was a bad joke, but <laughs> <laughs> when you said brothel, my mind was wondering. Like, <laughs> but I get it. <laughs> you get it. You get it. That you don't go there. He says you need to leave that world, go and preach. Maybe after two, three years, <laughs> you've trained yourself, <laughs> then you can you go, go back, back there and say, okay, let's, let me bring you up. So because if you don't, you, they will rather, rather minister to them, they will minister to you and win you back. And that's exactly what you're saying. If you don't leave the environment where you are hmm. and you want to create a change in your life, you have, what people don't understand is you don't have any reason to change. That's what your environment tells you. And I dare say that is one of the reasons we are where we are now in Nigeria. Because when you meet 10 people, they're complaining about how bad the country is. We know there are challenges. We know it's the worst in the world, if you want to put it that way. But for me, it's not. It's We've not seen actually. more terrible countries. It's yeah, not sure. You know? But if the more you sing that song, the less you understand or see the opportunities in Nigeria. Experience. For example, successive governments over the past two uh, tenors or so, the Jonathan Turner and now President Buhari, they've hammered a lot on agriculture. Hmm. We complained Nigeria was bad under Jonathan. Hmm. We didn't get into agriculture. The president has come, Buhari is there now, he's still pumping and talking a lot about agriculture. We have all this stuff by CBN and stuff, loans or no. We know hmm. not everybody that applies will get it. We're in Nigeria, hmm. we know, but how many of us have even tried to say, okay, I'm complaining in Lagos. I've not had any stable job in the last two years. Why don't I go back to my village? You have a vast land there. I have cousins I can order we'll with the farm or the land that will grow things. How many of us have tried doing that? But we are not thinking in that regard. Why? Because the people around us are our complainants and we enjoy complaining. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, so I, I'm going to throw it. I'm going to throw it. <laughs> Completely off. Please go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. And I'm going to say something first. I mean, I understand the power of our environment and all, but the reality, I mean, let's ask, so we're in Nigeria. Yeah. Please, does that mean that right now I should just relocate to Canada first? <laughs> because we are telling them, but you know, the truth is, I'm asking, the, I really would like to know, in this situation, how do we actually get to do this? Environment. The environment we're in, the scenario where we are in, what, what are we going to do? You know, so even though truly, I, I feel like when I was talking before the, before we got on mm. the show, I was having a conversation with Juliet when we were doing what we men do best, makeup. You know, and we, <laughs> interesting. And when she was talking, she had no idea why I was smiling. And I kept on saying, keep going on. Because there was something she said about power of environment and all, and your network. And I said to her when the progress, I said, there was a purpose for which, a reason why you had to say all that you said, that we had our conversation. And I do understand that issue of a network. Because one of the things that I try to do every time and everywhere is that because of the complaints, complaints, complaints that we all do, we all put out there, I ask myself that, how are we going to survive this? Especially, it, 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 it grieves, it really saddens me. It, it demoralizes you. You know, for men, yeah. I don't even know if you men understand it as much. 
when you have when you look at the next generation yeah. and you look at people coming behind you look at children so we're looking at from 9 to 18 i talk to i don't do youth empowerment because i feel that there's a lot to be done in that space but i kind of feel like when you talk to people in their 20s and their 30s and they say we don't see hope huh. then you ask questions I th so the question becomes how does hope come and I think that this power of environment for me, it hit deep, but I mean, I, my first thought was, can I just escape out of this environment? But mm. then again, I ask myself, then, so in this same environment, somehow it. you are thriving. Mm. Not yeah. the way you want to, not the way you think you should, but like you rightly said, I just want us to be able to really, really drop the complaint curve. It's drains us and That's changes the experiences the I talked about so, now. When you focus on negative experiences, mm. it's anti-growth. But if Felix has something to well, say, Felix, why are you saying? Can okay. you just also talk about how the average Nigerian who is who sees that the country is bleak, how can he use his environment and be positive in terms of growth? Well, what I would say is that man at birth is a tabula rasa. Hmm. Hmm. Means okay. that it's a plain slate. It's waiting to be written on. Hmm. So the environment hmm. is responsible for the rubbish we see in older ages. Hmm. But we can't... The only way to correct is, is at this level, when you are conscious, hmm. try to be a positive influence in your environment. You don't know which person's life you are writing Very on. Very true. So that's how to start. Why we start the process of reorientation on the other persons hmm. who can learn from feedback mechanism hmm. from their past experiences hmm. for a good output. Oh my <laughs> God, if, if, if you don't so stop Felix, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to you will. You, you, you spend another that episode was, analyzing his, his words. That was good. So, I mean, it? I like that. Thank you so much, guys. I mean, this was, even I learned in the process. Yeah, but the truth is that, the truth is that if you want to change your love, you have to do some work. Nobody's going to hand it over to you. So after the break, we're going to have a look at your day here next. Do you know you have a right? Every day, we complain about Nigeria, its challenges, unfairness, lack of opportunities, inequalities, and of course, non-representation by our representatives in government. We have so complained that we've become accustomed to a particular lifestyle. For example, when someone comes canvassing for votes, we say, when Ikuku gets there into power, he will not perform Jari. When we hear of a second Niger bridge being constructed, we say, Government is lying. Which second Niger bridge them they built? When we see pictures of this build, we again say, these people are lying. It is Photoshop. When the journalists are taken to the grounds to visit the bridge, we say, bridge where them no go complete. When we see that the work is progressing after many months and years, we again say, the materials with them they use no be good one. That bridge no go last. I'm sure you get the picture. And I'm sure a lot of you, as you listen to me, will say, no mind them, na APC, na dem dem. Well, you're wrong. And these baseless accusations are responsible for where we are today. Once a statement does not align with your thoughts, beliefs, or understanding, we attach religious, tribal, or political leanings to it. That is the safe rallying point. That way, we get other lopsided, sentimental thinkers to join you in opposing what the person is saying or doing. No matter how relevant it is, but the picture I'm painting here is that Nigerians have become a bunch of complainants who like to talk, lament, but never seize opportunities to better themselves, no matter how low-hanging these opportunities may be. We only exist, we stopped living. We move around like we do not have a right. Again, we are quick to say, you know, see waiting them, they do show where everyone claim rights. I know that <laughs> standing for your rights with government is a tall but achievable order. There's a way to go about this, but that's a story for another day. For now, let me point you in this scenario. I had gone to a nearby kiosk to buy an item. As I walked towards the kiosk, I saw people standing idle. Getting to the kiosk, I realized that vendors were, the vendor rather, was having a heated chat with someone. Other people who came there were definitely livid, faces turned red and obviously agitated. But they looked on and complained, waiting for minutes. After 30 seconds of waiting, I left. You know why? 
because there were other kiosks in the corner who sold the same item. You see, Nigerians patronize a food vendor, a mama put, for example. They are unhappy with the service, complain of insufficient use of salt, yet they go back there every day and engage in the same round of complaints. I'm painting this scenario to emphasize our weakness as a people. We've become used to complaining while we continue to live an unhappy life. We offer advices which we need to other people and we never implement these same advices on our own. Lastly, before Okay, let's say this. Lastly, and believe me, this is truly a life story that happened to me last week. I had gone to a mobile network provider, I won't mention the name, to make an inquiry. When I got there, nobody was allowed into the compound. It was locked. We felt like we were at an embassy trying to get a visa to travel out of Nigeria. And obviously, it, uh, people were unhappy. And, um, and obviously, a uh, dissatisfied customer cried out. This government, sha. So I turned, I looked at him and asked, now government get this institution? He said, yes, now, banks, mobile companies, all of them are government cosa. <laughs> if we all decide to leave our network providers due to poor service, they will sit up. But no, we won't. Knowing that we won't, the network providers keep rendering terrible service. Have you noticed that multinational companies offer better services in their countries of origin than they do in Nigeria? Have you noticed that beverage companies offer diluted quality of the quality drinks they sell in other countries? We have a broken spirit. No wonder politicians take us and never take us seriously. We are a back worse than a bite. All right, so like I was saying, uh that's telecommunication firm I told you of in their country, you'll be shocked or you won't be surprised that they will allow youths, young persons, undergraduates to come and participate in internship and then thereby transferring skills, international skill transfer. But in Nigeria, they come, they make a flimsy excuse that they have a high hybrid equipment and when it spoils, they need to get expatriate from outside to fix it. Therefore, they don't want a Nigerian undergraduate to work there. And the government will not say anything about it. The Nigerian government is supposed to tell them, if you want to do a business here, please make sure you're not only making money from the citizens, you're also contributing meaningfully. You're impacting the life in different areas. It mustn't be only through entertainment. Mm -hmm. Everybody has right. Your right ends where another person's right starts. But, but, but you see, what I do, you totally, government should work. But you see, in other climes as well, the people are active. The people could just decide to blacklist well, that company, and that's it. What we do as Nigerians, we don't take action, we complain, yeah. and expect a government that is faceless to do the work. I say faceless because there are so many facets of the government. Mm. When you say government, it depends on the sector you are complaining complain about. about yeah. And there's something that people say, oh, the federal government, I don't want to call the name of the president, you know who. <laughs> and people go, so I will not ask people, okay, this issue is happening in your states. Yeah. Exactly. Your state is not Thank a Northern. You. Your state governor is not a Satana. Your state governor it's is from, from your states. states. Hmm. Your local <laughs> government chairman is from your local government. Even though they don't stay there all the time. But you get my point. The point is yeah. that is the person I will go and hold, exactly. not the president. So I know the presidency could, can do more, but some of our problems can be solved at granular levels, even mm -hmm. from our own yeah. end. So the problem with Nigerians is we won't change, but we don't want to take action. That is exactly. it. In anything, no. We buy the wrong stuff from Conga Jumia. We you. call Conga customer service and say, this thing I ordered is not what was delivered. It's work. We'll just be complaining around like that. That's I will it. call Conga. <laughs> and they will come up. In the picking, it takes time. It takes effort. It's, yes. But that thing I have done will cause Conga to sit up and tomorrow they will be better. Mm -hmm. exactly. But when nobody complains, anything you don't complain about means it is all right. But I, I, I know editor wants to say okay. something, but let me quickly paint this scenario. When, um, what was it called, National Health Insurance started in Ghana around 2003 or four, I'm not too sure, but around that time, I have a friend who went to the hospital, pre I mean pregnant, and was going through the process. And she was called to the Ghana and listen, if you want to burn your child, go pay, make you, leave National Insurance. Home. No wow. bother yourself. Go wow. and pay and do your antenatal. But today hmm. in Ghana, that same national insurance that my this is not them say it's a friend that happened to that same national health insurance scheme is one that when you go to the hospital and your card is expired, you just pay through mobile money and immediately it is activated. 
is the same health insurance where when you use it, they send a text message to you immediately to ask if you're the one that used your card, if not, to report. But it started the same way Nigeria's insurance is. But what are people doing? Nobody's using it. Nobody. We're just complaining in our homes. Don't even we'll complain. complain on TV. We'll complain. Any I'm sure any time. I want to come in there. Before any time comes, I just want to yeah. ask something. You know, um, oh, there was something that happened not too long ago while I was serving. Mm. I served in Onicha, Anambra State. I remember one day I was going to commute from Onicha to Oka, and then we had to board the Willie Obiano bus. Then they call mm. it Obiano bus. Mm. And then you see some people were jumping lines, you know, ni average mm -hmm. Nigerians. Yeah, some of it. them, they don't respect line. And mm. me putting on my coppers, uh, line, yeah. I came there. What is going on here? Oh, yeah, everybody maintain one line. And they came and said, Who are you? Are you the only copper in Anambra State? We are going to beat you up here. I told them, As far as I'm concerned, nobody is going to move this line. They try, 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 try. Imagine some comment by telling me I was being foolish. Why didn't I just allow them? I said, no, huh. we have to do the right thing. That's I fought and fought and fought until to some extent to my strength can carry Take you, yeah. my, my strength carried me. And we're able to maintain line. And then when we got into the bus, some of the passengers were telling me I was too, they use abusive word on me. Why some silently told me? You did the right thing. You see, I wish we had somebody. Anyway, I, I won't talk to him because I know anytime you <laughs> something. Go ahead, any talk. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, all through well, when you were when you were talking mm. and with the discussions, all that kept on resonating within me was we have a broken spirit. Yeah. Because we have trashed this issue in various platforms, mm. in various places. We talk about it every day, social media, small gatherings, large gatherings, about the Nigerian people, about governance, about everything. And I real and I kept on the question was what exactly is responsible? You know how you need to go to the root cause of something? And I remember there was a documentary I saw a few years ago about the Great Depression in Britain mm. and how at that point, the same Britain, UK that we know today, people would actually, to get a piece of bread, they would actually literally almost beat each other. Beats, yes, yeah. And I realized that maybe there's some answer, some circle. In that, bro, how do you heal the broken spirit of mm. people? What about maybe one of the places that we need to start looking at is that we have a national psychiatric hospital. And I don't mean that in a bad way, <laughs> but I mean that the place of, you know how people pay lip service to mental health mm. and healing? Because some of the actions and the things that we do and the reactions and the behavior patterns that we're looking at now, are not just basic. I mean, on the face You're of right. it all. You're because right. I was involved recently while talking, I was being involved in a particular behavioral change campaign. And initially, it was just a matter of advocacy on TV. But then, even the funders realized that you need to look at paradigm shifts. Mm. These are not things that you just complain about or talk to pull out. You need to look at how do you actually systemically change everything. So maybe we're going to have to take a good look at our mental health Institutions, institutions in national in regard, and the big yeah. across board really really look at how what in governance how do you go into governance, you psychology it? as a you, people you, you, as solutions mm, policy changes true. everything everything is a system you're, you're right change. you're right you and, let and, and here too much in nigeria and it's important felix, those in the corridors of felix are not exempted who, who, who can trash this it's like you said from mental health to um, you know, even budgeting itself, <laughs> you, can, you can take it to any, any angle. But the bottom line is that you ask the question about how do we regulate this. And I think it starts with this kind of program. If you look at every country that's fallen into depression or have gone off the radar, one thing they do is that they just end up having a group of people that decide there must be a change. Mm, yeah. And I think that's what we're saying today, that as Nigerians, we must change. Yeah. Yeah. Now. There is ne certainly never uh, enough time to discuss issues on this platform, but we make do with what we have. Please don't just listen. Remember what they say. Rome was not built in a day. Play your part, even if it's just to share the advocate with family and friends. The more diverse thoughts we share, the richer the solutions they inspire. Don't forget, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms, on Facebook, that's facebook.com uh, forward slash. <laughs> <Sorry. Don't forget. laughs> Take it around, don't forget. All right. All right. Don't forget, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, that's plus TV Africa, and hashtag advocates uh, NG, and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocates NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate ng and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel Plus TV Africa. 
Join us next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now.